the much awaited patch 2.7 is finally within our grasp and will be up for quite a ride with the new 5 star Yelan and Xiao's backstory along with their friends from Inazuma, Ito and the new 4 star Kukishinobu. Yes, it's that time again. Welcome to the 10 things you might have missed in the version 2.7 trailer of Genshin Impact. Hey, Future Aru here and I want to preface this video with some spoiler warnings and that it will include speculations to what might happen once it comes out along with of course the 10 things that you missed. Right off the bat, here's a short little bonus. Did you know that this is Kukishinobu? Yes, Kuki used to be a shrine maiden before she joined the Arataki gang. And this flashback scene of a certain green-haired individual might be Kuki in the past. But I'll tell you more about that later though. For now, let's move on to the actual list. Number 1, well, who is Yelan's father? Well, if we were basing off of looks and names, it would probably be Uncle Tian or Tian Shu. Hopefully, his name translates to divine writing or gibberish at least, rather than this other translation which means, um, yeah. Maybe that's why he's so familiar with Yelan when she was still young. Anyway, Uncle Tian's relations with Yelan claiming to work as a non-entity at the Ministry of Civil Affairs could be related to his sister, Yundan, of which her daughter, Huixin, works as a secretary of the Liwei Qixing. Family ties do seem to go with similar jobs in Liwei. At number 2, Yelan does not only work in the ministry, but she is also mentioned as the owner of the Yangsheng Tea House, which if you didn't already know, is actually a casino. This would explain her dicey and gambling personality as well as her skill designs and overall aesthetic. Their tea house offers only the best tea in all of Liwe as well as quote unquote other goods, which probably means information because Yelan is also a special intelligence officer that reports to Ningguang specifically. She's quite the agent that travels all over Teyvat, including the Abyss itself. Her backstory is also for some reason related to the events in the Chasm. Maybe she has relations with the Mililith who fought with the Electro Yaksha 500 years ago, but for now we can't say just yet. Speaking of Yaksha, at number 2, Xiao's been acting weird around the Chasm lately. He mentions stuff such as, Everything is chaotic here. If you stay here too long, this space may well devour you. Something's not right. <coughs> Something's wrong with this domain. Leave now! Get out of there! And interestingly enough, inside of the domain that we enter, a ghost-like version of Xiao is seen speaking to an entity quite passionately, saying the words, No, it's still alive! Why would you become like this? Paimon also mentions that this weird domain that we entered can't be sensed by Xiao, which leads us to number 3, the Electro Yaksha. Now we know that the Electro Yaksha fell in the chasm 500 years ago, but could this domain be a place where he disappeared to? Xiao's concern for the certain person in the trailer might be pointing at the Electro Yaksha, and the representation of Xiao that we're seeing might be part of Xiao's past talking with his Yaksha friend. And maybe there's more than just Xiao and the Electro Yaksha in that domain. At number 4, inside of the domain, there are 4 seal scripts using Liwe language. Now I'm not good at deciphering these seals but based on Xiao's ghost next to some of these seals, as well as the other seals including Animo and Electro, there might be a possibility that we'll see the Geo and either the Cryo or the Hydro Yaksha in 2.7. At number 5, Yelan might know more about the domain that we entered than we think she does. She's pretty confident in solving the problems in the chasm, saying lines like, I fear that this problem underground is bigger than we thought. Just focus on taking care of yourselves. I'll figure out the rest. Along with that, the threads or strings on this scene may or may not be related to Yelan in some form or fashion. Could this be what Yelan has been looking for since she went to investigate the chasm secrets? Or is this some sort of trick made by an unknown being? At number 6, it looks like there's more to be found underneath the nail chamber after all. We can find more structures and parts that are specific to Enkanamiya and the old civilization. For example, these weird transport circles we see in Enkanamiya are also in this domain. And of course, the box magic looking rock formations are found there too. Whether or not this area is related to the portal looking entrance, we can't say just yet but we are of course assuming. But maybe this place comes from a different crevice of the chasm. But one thing is for sure though, and it's that there's more underneath the nail chamber and we get to see more of the unified civilization's technology. At number 7, it's as if Mihoyo really likes time dilations. Time dilations. 
And I'm not even talking about this damn compass. The weird Jaksha Domain's entrance is oddly similar to Ain's Domain with the Raiden Shogun puppet. So is this just another clash of ideals or is this just an aesthetic choice made by Hoyoverse? If so, then maybe there's also a failsafe for Yaksha's like the way A designed the Raiden Shogun puppet. Number 8, I can't really tell you guys anything about this um, thing here. Something seems to have been activated inside the Fantastic Compass. In the trailer, it's called the Fantastic Compass and it looks a lot like the compasses that we use when looking for those elemental oculus. But something you might miss is that whenever the hands move or whenever it is activated, it alters the area around it. You can see that the compass has two states that it changes to so far that we've seen. And I would theorize that the smaller compass that we see here can be used to alter the bigger clock and therefore changing the state of the domain. Second to the last, at number 9, the different states of the compass not only changes the state around it, but also the objects and its geography. But this could also mean that there are three compasses inside of that domain. We see way back in the trailer that there are four routes of which we could take. Maybe three of these routes are where the three other compasses lie. You can also see various changes in geography of the mountains and trees, as well as the scaffoldings and the smaller compass disappearing or being replaced with debris, depending on the three different compasses. Or maybe this compass changes the timeline depending on where you point it. But now we can only theorize and of course we'll find out in the near future. Lastly at number 10, at the end of the trailer we see an unknown entity, probably the Electro Yaksha or something else entirely, saying that he tricked us and used our weakness to lure us into the quote unquote underground space. As well as using everyone else's weakness or possibly memories to lure them in too. For example, you can hear what seems like Ito saying, no way! Was that who I think it was? Which possibly points to Kuki's older self when she was still a shrine maiden. So maybe Ito's weakness is Kuki? Is <laughs> I don't know. But yes, in this domain we get to see the fake versions or past versions of certain individuals depending on the person because we are being lured in by this unknown entity. And there it is, the 10 things you missed in the version 2.7 trailer of Genshin Impact. I hope you guys enjoyed this version's short speculative slash things you missed video. As always, comment below what you think is gonna happen or tell me that my speculation is wrong. I don't really mind. If you did enjoy this video, I encourage you guys to like and subscribe as well as click on the bell icon to help me get a better presence in the algorithm. And of course, so I can tell that you guys actually did enjoy the video. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video, right? Hey, thanks. Bye.